So this, uh, this is Spring Canyon, and uh, I didn't know it was part of Rockhound State Park. Uh, so uh, yet another place we're going to have to check out and again. Uh, we mm -hmm. arrived with 18 minutes to spare before they closed the gate. Um, so we're... Yeah, we didn't know it was a park, so we thought we would be able to go through. So we kind of prematurely left the rocks. Yeah. But I'm sure they close at four too. So, um, Thank you. but man, it was a beautiful drive up in there. A uh, really short drive, but super beautiful. And there's a hiking trail in there that I would love to do. And apparently, there's ibex there, uh, which at one point was a gift from Iran. And uh, they start out with 24 of them. Yeah, and now they inhabit. The area. Yeah, there's like three to four hundred or more. It would be so cool to see one. Yeah. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. So there's some like radar detector thing. Is this border control or? I think it might be. That's pretty fancy pants, whatever it is. Yeah. Huh. We're just parking on the side of the road here. Beautiful view of the Florida mountains and uh, Cook Mountain, and the Three Sisters, I believe they are. That would be the Three Sisters. Pan over here to the Florida Mountains. Pan over here, and that way in the distance is Cook Peak. So uh, last few nights we've been camping basically right over that way. And uh, last a little bit of sunset here. Little surprise rain. Uh, we checked the forecast and uh, it's not supposed to rain. And uh, this is a lot of rain for not supposed to rain. <laughs> so we uh, had to get ready and go in a hurry because we were still on the dirt. Well, we just stopped and got some work done at the Lordsburg Library. Uh, in New Mexico and we're back on the highway. Look at all that traffic going the other way. <laughs> we're not headed that way. Yeah. Uh, so we are... Ooh, a Lamborghini. Ooh, oh yeah. Uh, it was a Lamborghini there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, anywho, uh, we are... Our goal is to get to Tucson, Arizona. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen today. Welcome to Arizona. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss you, New Mexico. You're so pretty. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, mi Oh wait, I almost spoke French there, but yeah. Mi amigo. <laughs> uh, we just left a giant uh, love note for a rock hound. Run out of room in the van, so we decided to just do a little dump here, uh, right on the river. And uh, it's actually already already been gone through a little bit. Uh, we just had a, a nice lady come up to us and uh, take a few rocks. And uh, oh, we're adding more. <laughs> some somebody some rock hound's gonna be having a heyday with that those of you that have never seen a saguaro up close 
Um, this is what their little spines look like. And the, the fleshy part is very hard and smooth. And the whole thing kind of shakes when I move it with my finger a little bit. So that is what a saguaro looks like. Um, this is a very young one because it doesn't have any arms or anything yet. I guess they can take 75 years to, uh, to start growing an arm like this guy right here. Um, and some of them can cost you uh, over a hundred dollars a foot. So this one is probably five and a half feet tall. So just a small little saguaro like that run you 500 bucks or more. And then one of the tall ones will run you a couple thousand. We'll look at that one closer in a second. This one is well over 20 feet tall. Has a few arms, big arms. Uh, like those two arms are probably at least six feet. That one's probably about five. That one's probably about three. So if that gives you a little bit of an idea and some of them look pretty sad. Like it looks like all the spines have either withered away or been removed from the side of this one. Still very hard, but definitely cannot move that with my finger. Wow. It's me. Like you're looking straight at that saguaro and I'm gonna tilt up. <laughs> That's pretty big. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if you've seen the old wives tales and such, which is, that's what they are is old wives tales where you cut a saguaro and it's full of water. It's not, the water would leak out. Um, and it's also a federal fence to cut one of these down, especially in the national park. So don't do it. Um, don't do it. If you're dying of thirst, uh, call someone. There's probably cell service here. <laughs> if I can find a dead one to show you what the, like the wood from a saguaro looks like, uh, cause it's kind of interesting. So this is what a dead saguaro looks like. It's, uh, sticks and they're pretty hard wood. And there's where its arm was. And you can kind of see its bark is decaying on the ground. But it's a very hard wood. Very dense. Yeah, actually pretty lightweight for being as dense as it is. But uh, that is a dead saguaro. Still standing. And I mean, it's actually wood. It's not just a whole like plant. It's a tree. Just found this really sweet piece of petrified wood here. Should have brought my spray bottle. But really beautiful find. Decided to see what other kind of rocks we can find here. Yeah, and I wish I had my sprayer. This rock is so cool looking. This is, uh, this looks like malachite, but we're not sure if it's turquoise or not. I just pulled this out of the wash here. Let us know. Uh, if you're familiar with turquoise and malachite, I mean, this. 
Looks to me like the malachite we've seen before, but it is very turquoise in color. Inquiring minds want to know. Turquoise or malachite, you guys decide. Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument, a biosphere reserve. Huh. Down by the Mexican border, so we decided we'd check it out and uh, see what it is. Those things. There's a section of the park here. Um, there we can kind of follow along the border wall. Um, so we can kind of look over into Mexico, which is pretty cool. So I'll take you guys along here and you guys can look at Mexico with us. So here's the map of the area. Uh, the yellow part, it says you are here. So that's us. And we're gonna follow that South Puerto Blanco Drive up to this way, um, should, Kito, Kito. to Taquito Paquito. No, Quito Paquito. Quito Paquito. Not Taquito Not Taquito Paquito. Paquito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, Quito, oh, Quito Paquito. Pink granite of the Quito Paquito Hills. Ooh, I wanna find some pink granite. Mm. All right, let's check it out. Quito Paquito. Uh, this road really does go right up next to the wall. It's kind of a shame. Like, this is a one of the 47 biospheres in the world. Well, one Our of the 47. Yeah, one of the 47 biospheres in the country. And I mean, what kind of animals is this keeping from their, you know, migration? Yeah. These are the Kita Bakita Hills over here. Kita Bakita. Where we'll be able to possibly find some pink granite. And the border is right there. <laughs> Very close. What you find? Oh yeah. The pink granite of Kito Bakito. Yeah. I wonder if I should grab a spray bottle. We really don't know much about this uh, Kito Bakito other than it's a spring um, that the uh, native people used to use. And uh, it's the only place in the world where you can find the natural habitat of the Kito Bakito pupfish which uh, that's something that the guy at the uh, visitor center told me. <laughs> and I don't even, we don't have enough signal to even Google what that looks like. I know, we'll have to Google but, it when we get back to signal. Yeah, maybe we'll include a picture here. Yeah. But uh, looks like a little trail. I'm sure it's in these, this lush area over here. Wow, out here in the desert. Wow. This is beautiful. Wow, it looks serene. There's birdies.
kind of crazy. It goes from like this, just this stark desert to this little lush area full of trees and bushes. Gosh, this is a pretty scene. These are the pup fish, the keto bakito pup fish. It's a rare sight if they are. Notice some sort of like monument or something out there up on this hill. So we're gonna go check it out. Liz wasn't wearing good enough shoes, so she had to stay over there. It says uh, Jose Lorenzo Sestier, born Brest, France, died. Paquito, Paquito, Arizona, February 9th, 1900, age 74. And uh, people have left their offerings here of rocks and coins. Uh, not sure what this top part means. It's Q.ENP.D. I just found uh, I just found this nice piece of little rose quartz, not too far from his uh, his grave or memorial. So we'll leave that there for uh, for him as well. This is a huge copper mine here in Arizona. Well, holy smokes. <laughs> Gorgeous up here. On the way up here, I passed this Pepsi can. Pepsi Cola. <laughs> it's an oldie. Found an old Coke can and now an old Pepsi can. I'm just sitting right here with this rock on top. And that's where I'll leave it. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. <laughs> I knew we would have topped it off by climbing a mountain, but. Yeah, check out this view. You can see that line from here. Oh yeah. We passed on the way coming in. It's yeah, huge. Right over there. And the mountains look awesome. Look at all the, the van lifers just scattered. <laughs> Gorgeous. 
This is gorgeous. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon. And we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now. Right now we're watching the moon rise.